Hi, this is Zain Khan and in this video, we are going to write functions on our own. The way to write functions is that in the command window, you have to write edit and the name of the function that you want to write. Let's say I want to write random num, press enter. What this does is it creates a new file with the name random num and it saves it to your working directory. So I can see that random num dot m is a new file which has been already saved. Now I have this editor window open. I just command. So now you see what the function objective is. It is going to provide me with a random number between zero and X. The way to write function is that you first write the keyword function. And when you write a keyword in MATLAB, you will see that the keyword turns blue. So function turns blue. And now you write the name of the function. So random num, you have to make sure that the name of the function, this and the file name exactly matches. So random num and I write this is my input argument and I write end. This is officially a function. This is the keyword. This is an end. So everything you write in between is going to be part of this function. And this is the name of the function. This is the input argument. In order to provide a random number between zero and X, we are going to make use of this pre-built command into MATLAB, which is rent. What it does it, it provides a random number between zero and one. So all we need to do is we need to multiply it by X and we are done. I save this control S and now in order to call this random uh, num function, I go to the command window and I write random num and in the bracket, I write a number that say five. Now I press enter and I get a random number between zero and five. So what happens is it calls this function right here and it matches it to this form right here. And in, in place of the X, it is going to input this five and it is going to process this with in place of X, it is going to input five, multiply five by a random number between zero and five one and it is going to give me an output if i run it again random number let's say between 100 0 and 100 i get this i run it again i get this and so forth you have to make sure that whenever you are running a function that you had that you have written so it must be present in the working directory so here random num dot m is present in my working directory if i change my working directory let's say to here and I try to run it again, I'm going to get an error. So I have to go back to this and now I can try running it again and it works. Now let's say I want to save the answer that I get from this function call random num 100 to a variable. Let's say I want to save it to the variable x and I call it this random number between 0 and 100 and it gives me an error. The reason it gives me an error is because in the function call, we have defined the function name. We have defined the input argument, but we haven't defined the output argument. The way that you define an art output argument is by using this form. So whatever you write here is going to be your output. So I have an output, which is out one, which is my out one variable. This is going to be my output. This is my function name. This is the input argument. And I save the value of this in out one now. So now what happens is when, when I would call random X. So it is going to process this and save the value into the variable out one. And this out one and this out one is going to be the same. So this is going to be the output of the function. Now, if I write this and I, when I'm going to press enter, it is going to match this with this form right here. The hundred is going to be your X. Your out one is going to be your, this, let's say I call this Y. So this is going to be your Y out one and your X is going to be a hundred. I press enter and I get the value of y, which is 92.9. And in the workspace too, I can see that the variable y has been created with this value. So this is how we generally have a function call. It is a keyword function. And then there's an output argument equals to the function name and an input argument. 
Now let's say I want to go a step further and I want to write another function which gives me a random num number between two numbers that I specify. Let's say I write another function. I call it this random number. Now it opens another editor window. It saves it right here. And so a function between two, sorry, function that gives an output number between two values. So this is my command, my function objective. Now I write function. I write the function name, which is going to be random number. Here I give the two input arguments that we call them do and high. And I write n. And now I write the output argument. Let's say I call the output output variable as out where. So now what I want is uh, whenever I call this function between two numbers, so let's say 0 and 10, it is going to be give me a random number between 0 and 10. If I run it with random number uh, with 5 and 10, it is going to give me a random number between 5 and 10. So the way I can write that is I write the output variable as this. I can write low plus mm, high minus low times Right. Now what this all does is it makes the output variable equal to a number which is always going to be between these two ranges. Now I save this and let me run it out. Random number between let's say 2 and 4. And here we go. Now since we haven't defined an output for this it, it is going to save it to the answer variable by default. I call it between 20 and 400. I call it between some, let's say 300, 330 and 400 and so forth. If I want to save uh, the answer to an output variable, I can just simply write the variable name and write the same thing. Let me copy this. Uh, let me write it again and here it goes so here what I've done is this is the function name I have written a function which which takes two input arguments and provides one output argument and now of course you can also write functions which takes multiple input arguments and provides multiple output arguments let me show you what I mean let me write another function um, what I want this function to do is I want it a function which provides both the sum and difference between two numbers. Right, this is the this is what I want to do, and I have already written it. So let me just paste it right here. So this is my uh, function name. These are my two input arguments. And what it does it, it first sums the input argument here and it does a subtraction of the two input arguments and it saves the sum in the first output argument. It saves the difference in the second output argument. I save it and let me run this. So if I run this between five and 10 and I want to save it in two variables. Let's say I want to save it in a comma b. So these are my two output variables. So here a is going to be your sum variable. B is going to be your difference variable. I press enter and here so I can see that a is the sum. B is the difference. Now if I run it again between let's say 20 and 2. Now 22 and 18. Now let's say if I do not provide the output arguments here, it is just going to provide me with the first output argument of this function. So it is just going to show me this. Likewise, if so, if I do want the both the output arguments, what I would need to do is I would need to specify the two 
variables and now it is going to give me this now there are cases when you are only interested with the second or the third or the fourth output argument not the first or the second one so let's say in this i am only concerned with the difference of the two numbers so what i would do is let's say so i so instead of defining it like this and wasting a variable x which i know i would never want let's say for my case i don't want the sum i just want the difference so instead of saving it in a variable what i do is i write instead of the variable i write this this sign the trader sign and now when i press enter so now it the matlab knows that i do not want the first variable it is going to calculate the sum variable but it is just not going to store it and it is just going to store the y variable and give me the output i hope you found this video useful if you did don't forget to subscribe i am going to put a, a picture on the screen right now which is going to show you all the different ways of writing a function with one input argument two input arguments one output argument and so forth if you have any questions feel free to let me know down in the comments and as always see you in the next video